we're walking under a chandelier where basically it's just a whole load of erect penises all around the outside. Very nice red glass. I can't see it in anybody's living room. I'm Jackie Smith. And if anyone had told me when I was Home Secretary two years ago that I'd be at the Erotica show, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have believed them. Since then, my life has changed after I got caught up in the MP's expenses scandal. Amongst other things, I'd mistakenly claimed on my broadband bill for two pay-per-view porn films that my husband Richard had watched. You might just have heard about that. What my experience did show me was how fascinated people are by porn, but how little many of us know about it, how it's made, who uses it, and how it affects us all. Now I'm at Erotica, where everybody seems to have shed their inhibitions. And some fetishes, even though they're not strictly porn, have got to be seen to be believed. A chap in a nappy. <laughs> Get a guy in a baby grow. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I mean, so again, again, it's just you know, a some people are into cock and ball torture. So a little bit of rope, legs wide open, and a little bit of tying up. You know, it's not against the law. Where's the line at a fetish club? Because you can't have sex, but you know, is spanking someone's bottom having sex? Some people would tell you it is, because they get sexually aroused. Oh, you think fetishism is something that you do with your partner. Pornography, as a rule, is something that you do on your own. <laughs> Pornographic, to me, is a negative word. And, you know, if you say to some lads you want to watch some porno, well, that's, you know, a different connotation. Pornography is wanky material, which we all need. I believe that watching porn is, is part of a rite of passage, and I remember my first porn film in the same way that I remember my first cigarette and my first kiss. David McGillivray, pornography historian and writer. He's just one of the people that I met to discover just why porn is so fascinating. I began this by feeling that people were exploited in making porn and damaged by using it. Yet for David, it was just part of growing up in the 60s. I was walking down the road and uh, some friends pulled up in a car and the window was pulled down and the passenger said, do you want to come and see a film? And there was no kind of discussion about what sort because, of course, we were about to do something illegal. In the early 60s, it was illegal even to possess an 8 millimetre porn film, which is what, in fact, I saw on a white bedsheet attached to this guy's wall. It was three minutes long, because all 8mm films at that time were that length, so all there was time for to see in that film was uh, two people getting undressed very, very hurriedly, having missionary sex, and then the end came up. And at that time, I think it was probably the most exciting thing I'd ever seen in my life. Come here, boy, boy, can you get it up? Come here, boy, boy, is you big enough? Take it, take it. We're talking about excitement and titillation and discovering about something else out there in the world, not the real world, a fantasy world that, for young men especially, has to be confronted. It's very, very exciting. I mean, you'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> Take the enormous profits that are made from it as proof, I suppose. In the old days, <clears throat> certainly, you could become a billionaire. But it's very exciting as a young man to be a voyeur. That is what you're doing. That's all it is. Certainly not all it is for me. In the restricted over-18 shop at Erotica, I saw shelves and shelves of DVDs, picturing women reduced to nothing more than their bits. That's what makes me angry. And yet, only a few stands away was Bella and her website. Yeah, we decided to do it because so many of this industry is, is all about men making the decisions and men doing the, the sites, whereas I want to see it from a woman's perspective, you know, and do it. That's why the directors of this company are two girls, you know, two normal girls. I'm a mum, I'm, you know, so we want to do it something totally different. So it's showing me now who's online. This is a particular couple that are absolutely, totally in love. Beautiful girl. It's not the stereotypical, what I would class as a stereotypical porn. It isn't like that. You know, they're kissing, they're 
I would much rather watch something like that than I would, you know, some sort of... So they're an actual couple, these two? Yeah. And this is their house? And it gives them a thrill to share it with other people, especially if they know the person that's watching it is going to be enjoying it. Right. And I would. I'd much rather watch that than, you know, the fakeness. That's what I don't like. You know where she's screaming out and he's giving us... And it's fake. They're not together. It isn't real. Right, OK, he's, he's going there, so we'll, we'll uh, tick that off now. <laughs> but they've enjoyed themselves. There's nothing wrong with that. Liselle is a young woman who also enjoys pornography. I'm told that as many as one in three women view it regularly. Now, I grew up getting to see porn before I was 18, 13, 14, something like that. And I don't think it distorted my view of sex because it, it wasn't something I could get hold of a lot. It was much more difficult. Whereas now, I think if there's so much available, the worry is that young people then think that is a true reflection of, of how all sex should be. Nah, 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 come on. Walking down through um, Primrose Hill in the afternoon um, to see Tim. Um, today, I'm going to watch some porn for the first time. You know, what's particularly difficult for me is that I don't like pornography and I don't like what I think it does to men. But, of course, you know, somebody I care a lot about and who cares about me has watched pornography and I have argued with him about it and, you know, he takes a different view from me. Well, I've never watched it. I've never watched it with him and today I'm going to get the chance to see some. Hello, Tim. It's Jackie. I didn't really anticipate that one day I'd be sat with the former Home Secretary in my flat sharing her porn. I didn't really anticipate I'd be watching it on somebody's laptop in Primrose Hill either, so... Uh... Yeah. Well, but both our dreams have come true, really, <laughs> Jackie. Um, how, um, how, how much have you watched before? None. So you, you, you've been Home Secretary, you, you've legislated on this. Yeah. You've, you've had an opinion for a long time. Yeah. But you've, you've not actually watched anything. No, porn. just like I legislated on hard drugs and I never took them either. I, d I mean, I think if you've got a view on something, um, it's not necessary for you to have... You know, I, don't, I didn't feel it was necessary for me to watch violent porn in order to legislate against it. But I mean, when I, when I was growing up, porn was, was very softcore. It was... Smutty magazines that got Tim out. Samuels, presenter of Men's Hour on Five Live. The occasional VHS, and it was all quite tame. Mm. But I did a BBC Two series a year or so ago, which looked at the, the new form of porn. I mean, I don't have any porn here. Mm. Um, I don't have any DVDs. You don't need any. It's here, it's all on the laptop. It's just this unbelievable world, which even a, a couple of years ago looked very different to this. Mm. It's much more hardcore, it's much more accessible. And you don't need a credit card to see pretty much anything you want to nowadays. Mm. And rather than having to go to a sex shop or order another video online, with a click of a mouse you can go harder. Mm. And then even then you can go harder. Do you want to uh, yeah, you know, have a look, Jackie? The accessibility of porn on the net makes it very different to when David was a young man. We're an awful long way now from passing a video round or keeping a magazine under a mattress. Even in the 70s, there were quite extreme forms of pornography, even being shown in uh, cinemas, for example, a film called uh, Animal Lover. You know, I needn't uh, describe what that was about. Today... Filmmakers are experimenting more. They're pretending, for example, that they're going up to women in the street and getting them to take their clothes off. This is called gonzo filmmaking, you know. This is very exciting, the idea that you can go up to anyone and they will have sex instantly. I'm going to tap in um, one of the many free-to-air sites. Well, up flashes. You may only enter this website if you're at least 18 years of age or you have permission. Enter or leave. So, you know, yeah. what teenager is going to click, OK, well, that's, I'm not 18, I'm going to leave. Yeah. So that, that is the only barrier to entry. So you click on Enter, and you are through to um, a whole host 
of little mini video screens which are advertising what's there. So we do most, most viewed this year. This has nearly 12 million views. One right. video on one website right. has 12 million views. This is the thing that I really hated about when we were at Erotica and saw the covers of the DVDs, that it's sort of like, here I am, I'm a thing, ready to have sex with you. And within this, then, you can see it by top rated, most viewed categories. The big revolution was in the 80s when we moved over to video. Now there are new technologies, digital technologies, which make it much easier to produce for people to go out and make it themselves, you know. Big butt, big tits, bisexual, blonde. What the entrepreneurs will have to find out is, as always, a way of making money out of online porn. Blowjob, brunette, co-ed. Because at the moment, people are not buying DVDs because a lot of porn on the internet is free. And that can't go on. Cum shots, cunnilingus, dildos and toys, DP? Double penetration. Oh, God. Ebony, European... Men grow up watching porn and they just want hot action and for their women to be sluts. Women tend not to grow up with this kind of influence and want a bit of romance. If a relationship is going to work, both parties have to give a little. It's just a game, a contract we enter into, and it does seem to work. Not for me, it doesn't. It's nothing more than a depressing shopping list. Squirting. Straight sex, is it? Straight, and Teen text, text talk. Swallow, teen, teen? <sighs> well, that, I mean, technically it's going to be over 18 on this side. Yeah, oh. but... <laughs> but it is advertised as teen, yeah, young-looking. Yeah, yeah. Where are people making the money, then, if you can get that sort of porn? Well, it's interesting. I went to North Carolina and um, interviewed a chap who runs one of the rival sites to this. He'll put up, say, five minutes for free or a couple of minutes for free, and at the end of that, if you want to watch more of this film, click through to here, and then you have to pay... But this is the sort of thing which would have been absolute gold dust at school. Yeah. Back as a kid at school, this is the sort of thing that would have really given you alpha status in the year. So it just takes a day. So this is... Um, it's, it's headlined, uh, a cock the size of her foot in her arse, no joke. Let's this... join the 187,258 people that have watched this already today. It's anal sex with a man with a very big penis. I find it sort of quite horrible, really. I have to say, to be fair, she doesn't look as if she's been forced to do something she doesn't want to do. So he's back in, he's back in again. There's not a lot of story. No, I mean, you're straight into... Um, Literally? Yeah. It's animalistic and it's... Yeah. Um, I think we're about to reach the conclusion. And not before time. Many of those images will stay with me, not in a good way. In Tim's front room in leafy Primrose Hill, North London, my concerns about pornography have been reinforced. Oh, you touch my tie, la, la. But I've yet to speak to the people who actually make the porn. Ding, ding, dong. 